Welcome back to Hangar 51. So today I'm going to show you a little foam repair that I do when I uh, have a little issue, had a little issue, was flying in some very gusty winds and probably made 30 touch and goes in a row and then the 31st one uh, went badly. <laughs> um, yeah, the wind got under it and just flipped it over and did a cartwheel and broke the nose off. It's a fairly clean break. Um, so, not a big deal, but how do you fix it? Well, it goes right back together. No problem. It just lines up beautifully. And, uh, but obviously, because of the cleanness of the brake, um, this area of the plane here is uh, a weak link, I'd say. So, I do a little extra strengthening when I do something like this to fix it. And I'm going to share that with you today. So what I end up doing um, is I'll take a, uh, a barbecue skewer. It's a bamboo barbecue skewer. They're very stiff. They have a little flex to them. They're pointed on one end. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll make a hole with the pointy end. And I, and I try to get it um, lined up down, you know, as straight as I can get it. Down the fuselage this way in this way, okay? And I'll shove it in there, and I'll get it, you know, it doesn't matter how far they go, it doesn't matter how long they are, they don't have to match, none of that's important. You just want to get the weak area here, cut, extend past it, so that you're back in here where the meat is. So you get the, the barbecue scoop here long enough to go back in here, and up into the nose here, and uh, that'll disperse the the leverage of the breakage out farther and less likely to ever break again in this area. Because if I just glued it back together, it'd be fine. But if, I, if it happens again, it's probably just going to break right next to the glue joint. You know, the, the, the weak area is right, going to be right here still. And it'll just break either on this side of the glue joint or on this side of the glue joint. So by putting barbecue skewers, or you can use carbon fiber rod. Um, the only reason I don't like the carbon fiber rod, it's a little too stiff. So you can't, you don't have a lot of wiggle room with it, and it's expensive. You know, barbecue sears, you can buy a hundred of them for, you know, a dollar. So they're, you know, a penny a piece. So, and they work just as well in this situation. Okay, so I, I put it in there, and I get it in there pretty deep. And then I pull it back out, and, um, and then I turn it around so that the pointy end's out. And I set it in there. And you push it in there so there's just the tip of the point sticking out. Okay? Now you feed all this back in there again. And you, you try to get it as lined up as you can. You, know, you just got to kind of make sure you get your wires tucked in there and everything. And then you, you line it up. And you, and you push it on. Now, you might have to move it around a couple of times to get it lined up right. But once you push it on like that. That point just pierced the foam on the other side. It's going to be hard to see. You got to look for it. Um, so you, it, it'll put a little mark on it. Okay. So you find the mark, and then you take the pointy end of another barbecue skewer, and the same thing. You try to go as straight as you can this way and that way, and you send that in there, and. Until it stops, like I'm probably hitting something up here, maybe the cowl. So it's in far enough. Okay, and then you take this out, like that. And it doesn't matter which way you do it. I On this one, I'm going to put the, the skewer so the pointy ends toward the fuselage. And you slide that in there like that. And then you slide it in here like this. Find your little hole. Try to keep it straight because if you don't, the pointy end could start making a new path and then you'll throw it all off again. Okay, so you get that one lined up. And I get wires in the way. So I get these wires out of the way. Okay, so there we go. And then you do the same thing on the other side. 
Uh, and you can do two, four, three, it doesn't matter, whatever you're comfortable with. A lot of times I'll do three, like two here, and then one up in the corner, but I think on this plane two is going to be enough. So then we're going to do the same thing on this side. You do the same thing. You put your one in there, you know, as straight as you can, with the pointy end out, and then you slide this all back together again. All right. And now that you have this side lined up, you're going to slide it together, and you push it in again, and now it's going to make a mark on this side. Now, I've already pre-done this because I didn't want to spend a lot of time on camera doing all the fiddling around that you're going to do. So I'm just giving you the basis of how to do it. Um, and then you pull it back out, and you find your hole over here, and you put your barbecue skewer in there and you drive that all the way down, pointy in first to make the hole. Then you just turn it around, put it in there, pull your barbecue skewer out of here. And now you can see this one's longer than this one. It doesn't matter. It's not it's not important that they're the same length. And it really doesn't make any difference. Just as long as they're long enough to get the break area from this area back farther or forward farther. Now, there's no way it's going to break here because these are going all the way to the nose. So it won't ever break here again, but it may break back here. But it, I've got it to this side. It's going all the way back to the back window back here. So it's they're in there pretty long. So it should be really good and strong now. So now you do this. And you, you, you fit them back together like that. You slide it together. Again, get the wires out of the way. And there it is. So now, and like I said, you can wiggle it around a little bit while you're gluing it. But there's your repaired with, you know, it has some rigidity to it. The barbecue skewers are adding a lot of strength to the repair. And it lines up real good. Everything's nice and smooth here. And it, you can check your, uh, you know, just run your finger over it and make sure it's, you know, it's not out of whack. And if it is, just, you know, twist it a little bit. You'll have enough wiggle room to glue it. So now how do I glue it? Here's what you do. This is how I do it. Okay, so I've got it all right. I like the fit. It's perfect. So it'll slide together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take 5-minute epoxy and I'm going to put it in this end. And I'm going to slide, you know, I usually use the pointy end of another barbecue, not the one you're going to use. You don't want to mess that one up, okay? So you get another barbecue skewer with pointy end, and you kind of feed some 5-minute epoxy down in the hole on both sides. And then you slide your barbecue skewers in. Okay. And... You don't really, and it, so they're gluing, and 5-minute epoxy is going to set up pretty fast, so you don't really have to stop working on it. You can just let that set up while you're mixing up 30-minute epoxy to do the other half. And then I do the 30-minute epoxy, and I'll put it all around the, the foam here, and down the holes, again, with the pointy end, because you can get it to go down farther with the pointy end, you know, coat the walls of the, where the barbecue skewer is going. So I'll take 30-minute epoxy, and I slide it down in there, Put a nice bead around the foam here, and then I put it back together for the final time. And the 30 minutes, the reason I use the 30 minutes is it gives you work time. You're going to need some working time. It's it's you know to get the wires out of the way and get the nose lined up and get it all together. You're just going to need some work time. So to so use 30 minutes for the final assembly, and you put them together. And you slide it all back together like that. Do a final, make sure everything's, you know, where you want it. And put some pressure on it. And you, you have a couple options here. You can either sit and hold it. And, and I usually, if I'm planning on sitting and holding it, I'll put a movie on or something that will keep my attention. So I'm not just thinking about this. I'll get my mind distracted on something else while I'm holding it. And then, uh, uh, you know, in 30 minutes, you know, I've already used 15 of that just setting it up, you know, getting it assembled. So it's for 15 minutes. Or uh, another trick I do is I'll usually lean it up against my bed on the carpet. 
face down like this. Okay? And with the weight of the plane, you know, again, I'll set it against the bed on, and let it nose down, and then I, I'll, I'll still check it one more time, make sure everything feels nice and smooth, everything's in line, make my final adjustments, and then I'll just let it sit there and let it glue. And when you're all done, you know, you've got a good re solid repair. And then if you want to take the time to, you know, paint it, you know, do the, the feather fill sand with the, the wall speckle, the lightweight wall speckle, if you want to do all that, that's fine. Uh, if, you know, if it's just a bash around plane that you don't, you don't care what it really looks like, just as long as it flies good, because this is going to fly perfect again, and the, everything's aligned exactly. These weigh nothing, so I haven't set the CG off or anything. It's just a good solid repair that's uh, going to have a lot more structural strength now with these in there than just gluing the foam back together. So that's my recommendation on a repair like this. Um, you know, it, it, it's... The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. I've been doing it for 47 years. I, you know, I'm, I'm getting pretty good at it. But, um, you know, you're going to... You know, you're going to put it on, it's going to be out of a line, and it's, and it's made a little poke. So you're going to pull it off, and you're going to readjust it, put it back on it. You might do that six or seven times. If you do it that many times, it's going to be tough to figure out which hole was the right one. So you're going to have to really look, and I'll usually take a felt tip pen, um, and back it off enough to get the pen in there, and, and put a dab of ink on the foam next to the hole that's the good hole, the one that's really working. And that helps you find it so that you can stab it and then do the test fit. And, and if you're right, perfect. If you're off, well, you'll know just how close you're off. So you should be able to figure out from the adjacent holes by how you're off, up, down, left, right, which hole was the right hole. And so it shouldn't take more than two tries after that. And, uh, and then you've got a perfect repair. You know, it'll... it'll be very strong now. It'll hold up perfectly. And, um, you know, for a penny, a, you know, they, these work out to be, if there's a hundred of them in the bag for a dollar, it's a penny a piece. So you haven't spent any big money. You know, stuff you can get around the house, get it at Walmart, wherever you go. You know, it's not a big deal. Especially for you guys that don't have a hobby shop nearby anymore, like me. Um, you know, it's a 50 mile trek to Tampa to go to a hobby shop now. I have nothing close by. So, um, so anyway, that's the end of my repair. Um, hope that was helpful. Um, you, uh, you guys that have some broken airplanes, you want to put them back together. Uh, I think you'll find this will be a really good repair. You'll you'll be very happy with it because if you if you I can tell you right now if it gets blown over and does a cartwheel again like that, it ain't gonna break the nose off. Something else is gonna break, but it ain't gonna break here for sure. So all right, uh, you know what to do. Like. Down at the bottom, like, comment, please comment. Love to hear your comments. Uh, subscribe and uh, like me on Facebook, and we'll see you in the next review. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.